hey guys i hope that i am live right now if there is any problem with the audio or the video please do let me know if you guys are facing any issues with the audio or the video please do let me know if i am audible then we'll start off with the today's class otherwise please do let me know if there is any problems that you guys are facing all is fine okay that's amazing so we'll wait for 5 more minutes so that everyone is able to join us and then we'll start with our today's class okay no issues we are all good to go okay that's great um in the meanwhile if you guys are having any questions or queries that you guys want to ask please let me know so that i'm able to help you guys out in the meanwhile okay uh, i will show you the project that we will be working upon right now so i was just completing the project so this is the project that uh, we have been working on this is what we will be creating in the next uh, if possible then we will be completing the project today itself otherwise if we are uh, like not able to complete it on time then we will extend it for tomorrow okay so it will totally depend but we will try to complete the project today like it's not as you are able to see it's not a huge project when you look at, at the code wise section and uh, this also like for example this entire thing from right to over here to here as well as all these lines of code from here to here they have been including just so that you guys are having something to like play around with like it's not necessary to put it up in your code like they can all these lines can be removed by just a single line of code itself okay so that is the reason why like i said like uh, i've just made this project a little bit bigger so that you have something to tamper on with uh, while you will be coding as well okay so it will be a very fairly easy project we there is not a lot that we have to go through okay there will be some sections that i will be skipping over okay in the code because it is just uh like it's not important for you to understand it why i have written it uh, there because it's just uh like good practices you can understand it as that okay so yeah so do we have any playlist of python uh, the sky is yours uh, we are going to start off so i'm just showing this code we will be coding it from scratch you don't have to worry it about it as well okay so um, right now we are having a playlist of c++ that is going to be released that is being released right now let me just show it to you let me just switch off the volume uh, so the sky is yours if you go down the description of the video you will be able to see c++ core concepts okay so this is the videos that is getting released of c++ we are almost 50 percent throughout the way like we have 50 percent of the lectures have been completed uh there are almost like uh like we are having 34 or 35 videos in total for c++ so once uh, that entire thing is released so i think so it will take us so we are releasing two videos per day so a week more so seven days more it will take to complete c plus plus once it has been completed then we'll start releasing your uh, python videos now the python videos that will be releasing would be more than sufficient to learn python as a language itself you don't need to know so for c plus plus as well you are able to see that we expect you guys just to understand english nothing else okay and then we are building upon that okay everything from operators to arrays to pointers uh so for example dynamic allocation and pointers is a particular topic that is like the favorite topic of uh microsoft so if you go and sit for any of microsoft interviews uh c++ pointers and dynamic allocation of memory is the favorite interview questions uh that comes in microsoft interviews itself so all those topics as well in depth we have tried to cover up right over here as you are able to see just three videos we are covering only for uh, pointers as well as uh, dynamic memory memory allocation the same will be taking up for python as well um, we will be releasing notes we will be releasing uh, projects as well for python uh, and yeah you will be able to learn the language in depth from those videos we will also have something else in place some projects as well related to python that you guys can then work upon okay okay uh please give us a quick revision over yesterday's session okay so before moving further can somebody let me know what are the different points that we covered yesterday like what are the different points that we like learned about in yesterday's uh, class itself can somebody remind uh, sudarshan okay and i have heard about from a lot of person that we need to learn advanced python or python script after python so is it necessary uh see 
like i've already said you two languages you need to know in its entirety first of all either between c++ or java one of those languages you have to learn for dsa and cp so that language you should be very familiar with if you are moving on with web development then the language that you should be learning after c++ and java should be uh, javascript for web development if you are going into data science then the language that you should be learning after c++ or java is uh, your python okay for data science people now when you are talking about python just having basic knowledge about the language isn't does not qualify you okay for the job Okay, you have to have like advanced level knowledge in that particular language as well as the tools that come with that language as well, whether it be JavaScript or Python. With C++ and Java, you don't need to learn the tools with associated with these languages, but the language itself as well as the data structures that exist in these languages should be something that you should be very familiar with. For JavaScript and Python, you don't need to learn data structures in those languages, but yes, you should be familiar with all the tools and technologies that are associated with these languages. So yeah, so we learned about immutable and mutable orders. We learned about loops, for loops. We are going to use while loop in today's project. Okay, we have we have learned about tuples, list tuples, loop, range function. That's absolutely correct. Apply. So all these different things that we have already studied in yesterday's class, and in today's class we are going to focus much more upon the project itself. Okay, now how to submit the project? Where to submit the project? What will the process of the project? I'll be letting you guys know at the end of today's class. So if somebody is asking that question in the live chat, try to answer them. That sir has already told, Shari has already told that all this information will be shared at the end of today's class. Okay. If we are finishing the project, if the project gets extended, then uh, whenever the project is ending, I will be letting you guys know at that particular point of time. Also, there will be some concepts that we will be getting to know while doing the project that I will be asking you to study separately. Okay, so for example, we will be using HSV values for identifying colors or identifying images. So all these different things are something that cannot be like explained to you in just like an hour or so. So I will be asking you guys to explore a little bit more on your side. I will try to explain a brief intro about it. But I know that you won't be able to understand HSV in that small example or small reference itself. So I'll be asking you guys to study a, a little bit more, research a little bit more upon the topic separately as well. So you guys need to be ready for that as well. Okay. So we have got uh, Shaurya, one more Shaurya with us in the class. So that's also great. Okay. So shall we start with our today's class? Please let me know, guys. Uh, shall we start off with our today's class? Please let me know. Okay, great. So let's move on. Okay, so let's go to, so first of all, for this particular project, what are the different things that you need to install? That is also a very important question. The first thing that I want you guys to install is VS code. Okay. This is the best code editor or IDE or anything that you want to describe. If you are having a windows laptop, you can directly even go to like something uh, like the windows shop. Okay. Windows store directly search for VS code right over here and you will be able to find VS code that you can directly install from right over here itself. So it's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, otherwise as well, you can also search it on google okay you will be able to download windows for mac for windows as well as uh, linux okay so vs code is available everywhere you don't have to worry about it so once you have downloaded it installed it properly in your uh, computers whether you are having a desktop or a laptop then i would suggest you to go through the installation process properly after that once you have completed that as well what you can do is you can go to so this is how your vs code would look like Okay, as you are able to see right over here. Okay, you can just go to this extensions. Uh, let me just increase the size. So on the left hand side, you are having Explorer, you are having search, you are having source control, you are having run and uh, debug, you are having extensions, you are having testing. So just go to extensions in that search for Python. Okay, uh, it is a particular extension that has been made by Microsoft. Okay, the Python extension, just search for Python, you will be able to get it. It provides you IntelliSense, okay, it provides you linting, debugging and everything else that is required uh, for your editor to work. 
uh, to editor to consider python and all these small things that are associated with it so it would be easy for you guys okay you don't have to worry about it just install python don't if you are not able to remember it come back to the video this is a youtube video you can just scroll back watch the video again okay this was the package that i need this was the extension that i needed to install from right over here once you have completed this then again go back to your uh, browser search for python and then download okay once you have uh, go to python.org slash downloads as well you can directly go to this particular url python.org slash downloads in that you need to download python 3.10.4 okay so once you have downloaded that it will automatically uh, like download it for your uh, maybe it's a mac os maybe it's a windows maybe it's a linux so it will automatically download it for your particular os system go through the entire download like everything properly itself okay what are the different things whatever it is asking read through everything properly download it install it once it is done okay once everything is done okay up till now i know you guys won't be able to remember shit okay but when you are making the project come back to this video go through the video line by line follow the process you will be able to do it properly Okay, once you have downloaded python as well you will find that some things like pip install and all these kind of stuff isn't working right now as well so what you can do for that is again come back to this particular website python.org slash downloads again click on download python.10.4 10.4 uh, okay download that then go to just click on it okay it will open it up then click on modify okay click on modify right over here you want to click on modify okay uh, and then select everything except file launcher select everything select documentation select pip select td slash tk ideally select python uh, test suite then select next then select create shortcuts for um, install applications add python environment variable pre-compile standard libraries like that as well okay download debugging uh, symbols okay download debugging binaries requires vs 10.20.17 or later then click on install it will automatically update everything okay for you guys and you are good to go with your coding right now okay this is all that you need to do before starting your project okay it's extremely simple nothing to complicate it come back to this particular video once again and just go through what I have said line by line and you will be able to complete it. You won't be facing any issues. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, let's move on to back to our project. Let's close this. This as well. We don't require it. Let's go back to let's say desktop. So inside the desktop, I'm going to create a new folder right over here. A lot of different things that we are having. So let's create a new folder. So let's create a folder. Let's name it as boot uh, cam. Okay, let's name it as boot cam right now. And then uh, inside of boot cam, we are going to have our image and the video that we are going to use. So if you guys don't have a video that you already have, so the current video that I'm using is something like this. Let's look at the video itself. It's an mp4 video okay as you are able to see there's a green screen behind me and the video is currently playing right over here so this is a very old video that i had shot uh, previously so you are able to see that i've hit Groot right now so we have having a small animation over him so this is a small video that has a green screen you don't have to use the same video of course what you can do is you can just go to youtube okay you can just go to youtube and so see this is the entire c++ uh, number of videos that we are having so we are having like 35 videos in the playlist that will be released so it will take some time inside of youtube just search for green green video okay just uh, search for green screen video you will be able to see a lot of green screen videos as you are able to see just select any of them that you like okay, just select one of those videos download it if you guys don't know how to download a green screen uh, like a youtube video just search for it okay youtube video download 
online okay so just open up one of these videos okay, one of these links whatever video that you want to like uh, download just take it from right over here this is the video that i want to download just control c paste your link right over here control v and then download so it will download the video for you okay so it will be as simple as that you don't have to worry about anything the second thing that you require is an image the background image that you want to put so for the sake of this particular video i have taken up the hogwarts uh, demo castle v, uh, image that i'm going to put up as the background image of our video itself the green screen video is the video and we want to put up the background as our hogwarts uh, castle so that is the two things that you require before starting off with this particular project are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know free so next we are again going to open up our vs code okay so i think so i've closed the vs code right now we just open up VS code inside of vs code what we are going to do is we need to go into our file open folder and we need to open our bootcamp folder select folder okay so this is the place where we are having right now our green.mp4 we are having our image.jpg inside our bootcamp now we need to create our python file the file in which we are going to write our code so we'll create a new file uh, it is going to be a python file as you are able to see we need to create a python file right now so we have created a python file the name of this particular file is untitled one so let's change the name uh, let's name it to uh, pro p r o j let's name it to proj uh, save so this is called as p r o j dot p y okay dot p y extension basically means that this is a python file okay so it was as easy as that to create a python file right over here the second uh, like how to create a particular file you can just right over here this is the bootcamp folder that we are having you can just create a file by clicking on the first icon and then naming the project as uh, let's say p.py okay that is the name of the file so p.py is a basically a python file named as p okay so you can create a, a file from there as well i don't need this p.py file so i'm just going to delete this file okay move to recycle bin i just need one particular uh, python file that is the proj.py file now the second thing that you need to do is just to check whether everything is working or not right print okay and then hello just to make sure that everything is working or not let's save it control s okay so this is our particular python file proj.py we are having a particular line of code inside of it print hello world to run this particular line of code what we need to do is we need to click on this particular play button on the top right corner okay that is run python file okay we want to click on this particular play button the top right hand corner okay when we are clicking on this particular play, play button as you are able to see our terminal uh, opens up on the bottom uh, later and we are able to see that when we are running this particular line of code so we are running this particular python file we are getting hello world in our terminal okay we are getting hello world printed in our terminal this makes this is how we are able to make sure that everything is working properly next what we want to do is we want to install two packages two python packages that we are going to use one is the open cv package and the second one is your numpy package okay so numpy uh, you need to understand what a package is in python uh, now uh, for example let's let's try to understand you could go to the forest you could cut some trees get some wood bring fossil fuels like dig and put up coal and all those kind of stuff and then you could just take rocks sit together put the fire uh, put the wood put the coal hit two rocks together to make a, a spark and then get the fire at the end and then like create something out of mud to place it over it so that you are able to cook your food at the end of the day now this is an entirely very large process okay you could do this every single day but you don't do that you are having some packages some utensils that you are able to use you are having a gas stove you are having a gas cylinder you are having a uh, lighter you are having uh, utensils to cook your food on so all these basically makes your life 
easy all these things have been manufactured in such a way that the entire process of doing it from scratch is made relatively easy the same goes for python packages itself so if you are doing something in python it will take a lot of time so some of the people some of the coders came together to create some packages that uh, that makes your life very easy okay for some particular uh, stuff okay so for example numpy is a particular package that helps you to deal with matrix values so when you are having matrix multiplication matrix addition you want to do some kind of uh, changes in the matrices itself so i hope that you guys are very familiar with matrices please let me know matrix and all these kind of stuff are you guys very familiar with it please let me know are you guys familiar with matrices please let me know guys it's very important because without that you cannot move further okay that's that's great so i hope that you guys have studied matrices in your 10th 11th and 12th standard so and these are the kind of people that i'm catering to who are currently just joined college so i expect this type of knowledge to be there with you so all these different multiplication addition if you are doing that using just python it will take a lot of time so numpy handles all that calculations for you it provides some optimization over normal calculations some type of uh, functions that you are able to use to directly multiply different values together so all those kind of stuff is the already present in the numpy package the same goes on for your computer uh, open cv or uh, package as well so you have another uh, particular package called as open cv which basically pertains to all, everything that is related to computer vision if you want to access your camera if you want to load a video if you want to load an audio if you want to load uh, some kind of uh, file that is an image uh, if you want to read it if you want to utilize it if you want to change the color of that file if you want to do any sort of stuff over something that has image or video or audio inside of it that is handled by open cv now open cv or open computer vision is isn't a package that is just limited to python it's also available in c++ it's also available in java it's also available in javascript as well but the largest of these packages is the one that is available in python and c++ the largest open cv package with the most number of tools and technologies inside of it and the, the most number of things that you can do with that particular package is in python and computer uh, c++ okay you can even use c sharp like if you am telling c++ then you can use c sharp as well uh, can i use python ide c it's totally up to you you can use whatever you want to do okay but for a general audience it is always better at the end of the day when you will be coding you will be using vs code i used to use atom but slowly and slowly the changes and all those kind of stuff i was not able to maintain in atom editor so i also shifted to your vs code so vs code is one of the best ides that is available right now on the entire planet okay if you don't want something that is so custom you have to do everything on your own then vs code is the best it already it comes up with everything that you are going to use at any point of time that is the reason why okay uh, if you are not able to get output in uh, VS Code, just click on this particular play button. It will just open up the terminal for you. If you are still not able to get the output, just click on right over here, terminal, new terminal, and then run the task right over there. These are all the options that are available to you. Okay, so uh, now we need to install these two packages. That is OpenCV and we need to install NumPy as well. I've already installed it, but for you guys, you have to write pip install inside of the terminal itself the place where we got hello world as the output right over here down below we got hello world as the output we need to write pip install numpy okay i've already installed it so the output would be different as you are able to see we are getting that requirement already satisfied so i've already downloaded it so you can also download it in the same way the next we want to do is pip install open uh, let's see the name of that particular exact file uh, pip install open cv okay so the code for that is pip install open cv hyphen python okay so you can just copy it from right over here okay or else you can just type it as well pip install open uh, cv hyphen python okay and then you want to click on enter 
it says that I've already installed it. So because I've already installed it, I don't have to waste a lot of time right over here. So this is how you are going to proceed further guys. Once this is done, we are going to remove our print hello world from right over here. And we are going to start with our project. We are going to start coding our project. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know. I feel as if I'm getting a heart attack or something like that. <laughs> okay. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know. Guys, this is the project. I'm going through the project line by line because you have to make this project and submit it later on. Okay. So, uh, I will give you two days. Okay. Like, after two days, like if I am able to complete this project today, tomorrow I will give you a holiday. Day after tomorrow, I will be releasing a video where I will be telling you guys how to submit the project. Okay. So that you guys are also getting some time. I will give you almost like four to five days to complete the project. Okay. And then submit it. Don't worry about it. Okay. But you will get enough time, but you have to follow this video thoroughly to make the project. Okay. Okay. Great. Now, once you have downloaded the open cv library as well as the uh, numpy library you would need to import it into your code okay you need to tell your code that i'm going to use these two libraries of python okay to do that you got to write import okay i need to use this cv2 that is the short form for open cv uh, package itself and the second thing that i need to import is import numpy okay import numpy right over here but I don't want to call numpy again and again. So whenever you are using a particular package, you will have to write numpy dot and then the method. Just like in strings we had seen, string name dot, then maybe like a format or something like that. So you have to call the methods like that. Now numpy is something that is a lot tedious to write. Okay, it should be like two letters at most because I, have to, I, have to, I will have to write numpy again and again and again and again throughout my code. So I don't want that. So I can directly write, I can give a nickname to numpy. Okay, I, I, I'm importing numpy, but I'm giving it a nickname as well. I can call it by as np. Okay, so instead of writing numpy again and again, I'm giving numpy a nickname as well. CV2 is already very short, so I don't need to give it a, a nickname. It's already very short. Okay, but numpy is a little bit big, so I'm giving it a like a nickname that okay i'm importing numpy and i'm calling it np or uh, just a short form for numpy itself are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know import start from numpy it will be all right praveen but why do you want to do it okay it's as simple don't complicate stuff be as simple coding is all about keeping things simple okay if coding was about keeping things hard we would not have coding in our lives we would have still be doing like everything by like if you want to switch off that particular uh tv just go there and then like destroy one of those vacuum tubes only then it will be switched off you have got programming in your life to make things easy never make things tough okay the it should be your life's motto if you want to become a programmer Okay. But that does not mean that you should also give in to others. Okay. Don't do that. Like you want to make things easy for everybody else. Okay. Not a lot easier for you as well. Okay. Uh, Sunita, just listen to me properly. I'm telling you everything verbally. So I don't need to write any type of comments because this code is not going to be sh uh, shared anywhere. Okay. We are not going to sh share the code anywhere because you have to pick the project. Yes, I will be coding it live right over here. I will be explaining each and every statement, each and every line of code properly, but except one or two lines because that isn't necessary. That is just conventions that we need to follow. Okay, so yeah, let's move on from right over here. So first of all, we have imported CV2. We have imported NumPy. Okay, we have renamed NumPy as NP. Next, we want to take in the video. Now the video that we are having, that is green.mp4. We need to take in the video. We need to process the video. We need to save that video inside a variable itself. So let's do that. Let's create a variable called as video. And video is equals to, let's say, cv2. 
okay that is the computer vision uh, library that we are having open cv dot uh video capture okay video capture is the method that basically takes in the video that you want to load okay the video the name of the video right now is green dot mp4 okay you need to put up the ex exact extension of that particular video if it is mkv if it is uh any other uh, m mp3 is like uh, audio itself so it's mp4 or mkv or pov or anything else as well you will have to put the exact extension my suggestion would be always use mp4 you won't be facing any problems okay so this is how you are going to load the video you are capturing the video and putting up inside a variable that you can use later on the same thing we are going to do with the image as well so for image so I am a G E image. Let's create a, a variable CV2 dot I am. Okay. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know because I, I can only know what you guys are telling me. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know guys. Great. So for image, the one that we are going to use is I am read. Okay. That is, you want to read the image. Okay. That is the method. Then the name of that particular image right over there. So let's check what is the name of the image. We are having img.jpg. Okay. So you can use a JPG image. You can use a PNG image. My suggestion would be go with a JPG image. It is a lot easier to process. Okay. So img.jpg. Let's put up the name right over here. img.jpg right over here video is itself a uh, another data type like it's a video data type it's basically arrays of uh like what you can call it as arrays of uh okay not arrays it is okay I forgot the name matrices. Okay. Yeah. You are having lists. So lists can be one dimension, two dimensional, uh, nth dimensional lists as well. Now that in the same way can be arrays. So in NumPy arrays is a type of list itself. You can think about it as that it's not a type of list, but I'm just trying to explain it to you guys. So similarly, videos are nothing else, but images images are nothing else, but matrices. So these are an array of matrices itself. Okay. So that is basically video. So video is itself another data type on its own. Okay. What should we do if we don't have a system, just uh, take this video up, write the code up on uh, IPYNB file and submit it. That's the only thing that you can do. If you don't have a system, but you will have to submit the code to pass. Okay. Okay, so right over here, we have taken in the video, we have taken in the image as well. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to create our while loop. Okay. I hope that you guys are able to understand up till here. Please let me know. Uh, I'm not dealing with Java right now. I'm dealing with Python. I'm not familiar with the Java language in like while using it for development. Java is intended not to be used for development. It is used for like computer, uh, computer programming and DSA. When you go into Java, you will be going into the realm of backend where development for Android based applications. And it's not a good genre right over there. Okay. So what we are going to do right now is we are going to create our while loop. So while true, so up till the point where the loop is true itself, it will run. Okay. Wherever it will become false, there will be some error. It will break and then the entire stuff will stop working. So we want to create it for a uh, while true. So if, while everything is true. Okay. We are going to create our red comma frame is equals to um, red comma frame is equals to video dot read. Okay. So right over here, what is happening is red is basically if there is no video or the video is like, there's nothing inside the video file itself, or there's any problem, any uh, corruptions with the video file, red will become false and your while loop will break. Okay. That is basically what red means. Okay. If there is any problem, any discrepancies with the video file video right over here is the video that you have loaded or using this particular line of code. So if there is any discrepancies with the video file, okay, 
uh, you guys will be uh, getting red as zero and that is basically red being false if red is false then this particular loop will break and you will come out that, uh, out of that particular loop otherwise if there is video inside but that particular loop then that video will get saved inside of frame okay that video will get saved inside of frame okay this is what we have, we have done in that particular line of code uh, I don't think so the stream is lagging I'm able to see my stream going on perfectly uh, because I've opened up the live chat as well I don't think so there's any problem Anand I think so it is from your uh, side if video is a data type that can we use that as a variable name uh, no not per se as video is a data type okay not the name video but whatever the name of that particular data type is video itself is a data type okay not the name so uh, basically saying that uh, mercedes is a car okay so it does not mean that if i'm telling mercedes it means a car itself it mercedes also makes a lot many different things right? just like ross royals okay if i'm talking about ross royals then that particular when i'm saying about it ross royals is a car okay so i'm that is true but ross royals does not only make a car it also makes aeroplane engines it makes aeroplanes it makes jet fighters as well so it has a lot many number of divisions inside of it similarly when i'm saying video itself is a data type it's a type of data type but that's not the name of it okay okay great so next what we are going to do is we are going to show this particular whatever frame has captured okay whatever we have captured in our frame okay if red so if there is no problem with the video and everything gets saved in the frame what will be shown to us so let's try to show that so for that we are going to use cv2.im show that is going to show us whatever we want to see let's name that particular as frame okay i want to see the frame so whatever it is going to show we have named it as frame that is the name of that particular uh, show like for example i'm going into a particular uh, movie like bhul bulaiya so the name of that particular movie is bhul bulaiya the movie that is going to be played is a particular cassette that is going on behind and that name of that cassette is also bhul bulaiya so what uh, is the name of the stuff that i want to show so i want to show the frame itself so I'm going to show the frame. So I'm going to show the frame that is load the frame. I want to show the frame. The name of that particular window should be frame as well. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is how to quit that particular frame. So I, I want to close it. So how to close it. So that, uh, so for example, if there is no problem with the while loop, there is no problem with the video itself. I need something to close it as well. So for that, we are going to create another variable K is equals to CV2 dot wait key. So what does wait key basically does is it will wait for you to press a particular key. Okay. It will wait for you to press a particular key. So for example, you are pressing G, you are pressing A, you are pressing M. It will wait for you to do that. Once you have done that, whatever, uh, like whatever key that you have pressed, okay. So for example, you have pressed H, the um, value, the Unicode value of H will get saved in the variable K. Okay. The Unicode value of h will be saved in the variable k for example if you have pressed g then the unicode value of g will be saved in the variable k okay for those who are not familiar with unicode i suggest you to google it and learn it separately research about it it's very fairly easy to understand so i don't think so it and we need to waste our time on understanding unicode okay so for example h has a different unicode values for example you have learned about ascii values Similarly, there is a Unicode values as well for each particular letter uh, numbers or any of the keys that you are having on your laptop. Okay. Next, what we are going to do is if K is equals to is equals to ORD that basically checks. So ORD is a particular function that checks the uh, converts uh, the value that is the value of Q from the Q as a particular uh, letter to its Unicode value. So for example, just taking an example, I don't know what the Unicode value of Q is. That is the reason why we have used the ORD function. Okay, let just to make everything a bit more clear, let me just put up some space right over here. So ORD basically converts the value of Q to Unicode. It shows its Unicode value and it will check whether the va Unicode value of the button that you have pressed is equal to the Unicode value of ORD or not if it is equal then we are going to go inside our if uh, loop okay if statement 
and we are going to change right over here to break okay that is basically that we want to come out of this particular for loop okay we want to come out of this particular while loop that is the basic code that we have written right over here what is one in wait key basically we want to check just for one particular button okay that is the reason why we want to check it for one okay so that will be saved inside of k right over here are you guys able to understand what we have done up till here please let me know are you guys able to understand what we have done up till here please let me know so i will just paste it are you guys able to understand please let me know guys okay so now we need to like whatever resources that has been uh, occupied by your program so for example the video file that has been occupied by your program the window that has opened up by your program itself we need to close it okay um so please repeat the if line see there's not a lot of time that we are having okay so if you are not able to understand something let me know for example for example um Magam Pragan Reddy has said it absolutely clear, clearly that sir I was not able to understand the if line so always say like that okay okay so let me under make you guys understand the if line okay so right over here you have understood what this particular line does okay k is equals to cv2 dot wait uh, key one okay uh, are you guys able to understand that particular line of code basically cv2 dot wait key will wait for you to press one of the keys on your keyboard as soon as you are pressing one of those keys that is key is wait key one as soon as you are pressing one of those keys the unicode value of that particular key basically you are pressing k okay or basically you are pressing a so whatever the key that you have pressed the unicode value of that particular key maybe it's 41 uh, maybe it's 42 that unicode value of that particular key will be saved inside of the variable k Okay, so K now contains the Unicode value of the key that you have pressed. Next line is the if statement. The if statement basically checks whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. If it is equal, then it goes inside the if statement. Otherwise, your code continuously uh, keeps on running. You have no other problems right over there. So if you are coming to the if statement right over here, there is no capital Q letter on your keyboard. Okay, there's no capital Q. What I've said is just one particular key that you can press. One key. Shift, as soon as you have pressed shift, it's two keys. Okay, so you can only press one key. That's why, don't ask silly questions. Apply IQ. Okay, so if you are having the value of K equal to ORD. ORD is a particular um, function in Python that basically returns the Unicode value of the object present inside of it. Right you here the object present inside of ORD is Q. So the Unicode value of Q would be returned right over here. That's an integer that is maybe 72, maybe 74. So this will be replaced by the Unicode value of Q. And you are having the Unicode value of the key that you have pressed right over here inside of K. If both of them are equal that is you have pressed Q on your keyboard then your loop will break. Okay your while loop will break and you will come out of the while loop and everything will just close down. Okay, until unless you are doing, until unless you are pressing Q, everything will work properly. Your videos will be going on continuously. Okay, so once you are coming out of this while loop, once you have pressed the word Q, you have pressed Q as a particular letter, you are coming out of the while loop, then you need to deallocate all the resources that you have been using. So for example, you were using the video, okay, the video that we have uh, created, the green dot mp4, we need to release that, we, do, we are not using that video anymore. Whatever windows that were opened up, okay, maybe whatever you were trying to show, um, okay, you can use any letter, Q is preferred, absolutely correct, okay. So you need to destroy those videos as well, you need to co close those windows as well. So we are going to write that particular line of code right now. So whenever you are pressing Q, what should happen? Okay, so you are having video dot release. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to destroy, okay, all the windows. So you want to do CV2 dot destroy Yeah, I think so I have made this uh, DES destroy all windows you want to destroy all windows as well 
okay so these are the two things that you want to do right over here uh, shivam we are not going to share the link yesterday it was a mistake by my team that's why they had shared it in the live chat today they won't be doing it i have told them already so you will have to wait for the end of the class to get the uh, attendance link and you will have to do it like everybody else okay so right now let's play the video okay so this particular code code will open up the video read the video show you the frame that we are going to use and as soon as you are clicking on q it will just close it so let's run this particular line uh, all the lines of code okay as you are able to see this is the uh, frame that we are having right over here okay this is the video that we are having right over here okay as soon as, as i'm clicking on q uh, it got closed okay as you are able to see it got closed right now so that is what we have done up till now are you guys able to understand please let me know are you guys able to understand please let me know great so now we are going to so that particular video the size of the video and everything uh, so cv2 dot destroy all windows basically mean the window that opened up the frame that opened up right over there i want to close that as well i want to destroy it i don't i'm not using that frame anymore every time i'm running the program a new frame should open up that is what i've done right over there i want to deallocate all the resources okay great so now what we want to do is the frame that opened up the size of the frame we don't know maybe it was 1080 by uh, 640p or something like that we don't know we want to uh, make it consistent with the image as well we want to have like everything of a consistent size so the frame itself we are going to resize it okay so for example right over here the frame we want to resize it we don't know what the size of the frame is but we want to know it for sure that okay this is the size of the frame so what we are going to do is we are going to use cv2 dot resize right over here the frame is equals to cv2 dot resize okay this is the function that we are going to use right now and the next thing is uh okay well if carry was programming then he would have used some better words at the end of the day <laughs> okay so we want to resize what do we want to resize we want to resize the frame okay uh what should be the size of this particular resized uh frame itself we want to put, put the size of the resized frame so in a tuple we are going to put the size that we want to resize it to so let's uh, resize it to 640 by 480p okay so this is the size that we want to resize the frame to so what we are having the uh, it right over here is frame is equals to cv2 dot resize what do you want to resize frame and to what particular size do you want to resize it to so 640 comma 480 so i want to resize it to that particular size itself are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know great so right over here i'm going to run this particular line uh, code as well just to show you guys okay it's taking a minute so as you're able to see now this is the video at 640 by 480 the last time it was a little bit big right now we know the size of this particular frame itself as soon as i'm clicking on q it gets closed okay everything gets closed this program stops running as well okay so that is our aim okay so let's move on to the next thing we have already uh, read the image okay the image itself now what is our aim just just talk about the aim itself we are having our uh, frame we are having the video we are having a green screen behind it we need to replace that green screen with the image we want to replace that green screen with the image that is img.jpg so the size of the video and the size of the image should be the exact same are you guys able to understand this the size of the video the size of the uh, frame should be the exact same thing please let me know how the user know that they have to press q for closing it right now you are not coding it for the user you are coding a program for yourself so you actually know that you want to press q okay otherwise there's a cross at the end as well you can just 
click on cross and that will also close the window for you okay okay so the next thing that we want to do is we want to make the image of the same size as well so let's create image is equals to cv2 dot resize and we want to resize the image and to a size of 640 by 480 okay so this is the code that will be running right over here you want to resize the image as well okay it's getting an error after the video has been fully played because the number of frames has get like is getting over so there's nothing to play after that so that's why it is getting you that error so right now we don't care about it because we we are not looping over the video in any case we just want a backdrop to be attached to a particular screen okay i'm getting green screen video without sound can you use it of course we are not having any sound as well okay so because it's an uh what we are doing right now is I am show, so I am show does not have any kind of sound to it. Okay, so we want to resize the image as well. So we have already done it right over here, as you are able to see. Okay, so if you want to see the image, you can directly use I am show to see the image, but that is not like important. Okay, so we are able to understand that we have resized the image as well. Okay, the next that we want to uh, focus upon is we want to convert the colors right now the colors that we are having so any type of default uh, image that you are having is an rgb value okay so any uh, color that you are having so for example let's let's try to understand this by using the drawing board itself i think so that would be a better uh, paint okay so let, let's try to understand this it's very easy to understand any image any uh, picture that you are having so what is an image itself let's try to understand this any image you must have heard it that this is 1080 pixel or this is 4k or this is like 8k so what is that resolution that you speak of it is the number of pixels that you are having or ppi you must have heard about ppi in mobile phones as well like this is a particular uh, mobile like google pixel is having like 450 ppi what is that so pixels per inch so every image or any display as well is made up of small pixels okay it is made up of small squares okay if you bring your mobile phone so this mobile phone is like having a very good quality display so i won't be able to see it properly but if you are having a display that is like full hd or your tv as well or your la uh, laptop as well these will be full hd displays but keeping the screen very close to your nose you will be able to see some uh, squares on the display itself okay these squares are called as pixels okay these squares are called as pixels each of these pixels can have a value of r g and v okay it has three leds inside of it one is a red led the second one is a green led and the third one is a blue led okay these are the three leds present inside of each pixel okay each pixel has these three leds now these three leds together okay these three leds can have different brightness levels okay so for example zero is like at most dark and 255 is like the highest level of brightness for each of these uh, uh, bulbs itself so for example if you are having like all three at the highest brightness like it's 255 comma 255 comma 255 that is the value of rgb okay red blue and green okay r uh, rgb that is red green and blue so if you are having the values at 255 that denotes your white color okay that denotes your white color similarly if all the values are zero then that denotes your black color Similarly, if you're having a value of like 255 comma 0 comma 0, that denotes that it's a red color. Okay, similarly, if you're having 0 comma 255 comma 0, the value denotes green color. And similarly for blue as well. Now, you can create combinations of colors as well. Let's, let's see right over here. Okay, you can create combination of colors. For example, this particular red color, that's a bit orange as well, has an RGB value of 235 comma 64 comma... 52 as you are able to see from right over here similarly i can go just go to any other color let's say like a greenish sort of color with a light let's go to a little bit light as well okay so this is a very light green color so you are able to see that the rgb value for the same is 205 uh, 247 235 if you are going at like the utmost dark color right over here 
okay then uh, i can even put it out a bit more so it's like almost close to 0 8 comma 8 comma 8 and so on and so forth so just like you are having rgb values now an entire image when you are considering an image itself so let's say this is an image of let's say a river right over here okay so it consists of a lot many number of this pixels okay it just consists of a lot many number of pixels each of these image and each of these pixels has some value of rgb and that together all these pixels together create this particular entire image itself okay so for example if you want to denote this particular image i can represent it by its rgb value so i can just create a matrix okay and each of these matrix has a value of rgb that is a tuple containing rgb value and that basically denotes your entire uh, image itself okay and now what is a video video is a number of images con uh, connected to each other okay along with time that is a particular video so it is basically a like a array of all these uh, matrices of images the each of which containing a tuple of rgb value now rgb value is something that you guys will be able to understand it much more clearly the second particular stuff that uh, is there is hsv okay so hsv is an alternative to rgb values okay just like you are having rgb values there is hsl values there is ssv values there's a lot many number of values that is currently there so hsv basically means hue saturation and volume okay so just like you are having rgb value that basically denotes the red green and blue concentration that is currently there hsv values you can convert an rgb value to an hsv value as well uh, which represents hue saturation and volume now hue you must have heard it about with some very high quality lamps if you have ever bought a very costly high quality lamp there's a hue value inside of that that you can change okay basically that converts like into like a yellowness there's a when you are increasing the u value the yellowness of the image or the light increases okay saturation basically how saturated the uh, thing is so the more uh, how bright that particular image is so that is basically how you denote by saturation and volume denotes the type of colors that can be there so all this kind of stuff that is the aim okay you need to learn about it on your own Okay, because it will take a lot of time to explain you hue saturation and volume that is your task that you have to research about hue saturation and volume i hope that you guys have understood rgb values i hope that you guys have understood uh, rgb values your job is to understand hsv values on your own okay so right now we are going to convert our uh, red blue green value of the image to hsv values to be used okay that conversion is also there it's a mathematical formula that converts it for you but uh, we don't know that mathematical formula even i don't know that mathematical formula and i don't want to waste uh, my time to just like first find the formula out and then make the entire code for it i already have a function in computer vision okay in cv2 we already have a function that we can directly utilize to do that so what we are going to do right now is we are going to have after the image we are going to convert everything into hsv so hsv is another frame that we are kind of, kind of, uh, like creating another frame that we are going to have we are going to use cv2 dot convert cvt color okay we want to convert the color and then we want to have the color of frame we want to convert the color of frame we want to convert the color of frame from cv2 dot let's say uh, color we want to convert the color from color underscore bgr blue green red you want to convert it to hsv so hsv okay so there is like hsl hsv full hsl full so there's a lot many number of things that you can convert it to but we want to convert it to hsv itself so this is the code that we are writing we are creating a new frame okay so the previous frame was the frame frame one that is basically consisting of about the blue green and red values right now we are creating an hsv frame for us uh we are going to use the cv2 convert color we want to convert the color from bgr that is blue green uh, red to hsv uh, we uh, the frame that we want to convert it is the frame and then we are going to have uh color bgr to csv okay uh, right over here 
next what we want to do right now is we want to create a mask okay so right now whatever you have done up till now okay you have converted it into hsv values and everything you need to specify how you are going to like uh, how you are going to identify the green color okay how you are going to separate the green color from the rest of the video so you have already seen the video you are very familiar with it so there was the green color around the human that is me okay how to separate it from the video itself that is our task okay to separate that we need to create a mask we need to create a mask around our human itself we need to identify our human create a mask around him and then remove the green color from the background that is our aim so we need to create a mask so are you able to understand what do i what do i mean by mask a mask is basically just like you are covering your face with your mask we need to create a uh, some object that we can cover the human up with okay so we can just remove the human from the video itself so first to remove the human we need to mask it we need to find the particular uh human itself okay so we are going to create a mask to create a mask we are going to have mask mask is equals to cv2 dot um let's say so to create a mask we need to find out like uh the color range of the human being itself okay so what are the different colors that this human is being uh, added to now it's very difficult to find that out because a human may have like a different color t-shirt a different color skin a different color hair so it becomes very difficult to do that what if if we go the other way around instead of masking the human let's mask the green color let's find out so you are having the green color now that green color is also not consistent okay there may be some folds over the banners there may be some green color here and there as well so there will be some shadow over that so instead of uh, masking the human let's mask the green color so what we are going to do is in range okay we are going to find in what range if this particular hue if this particular color like if, if from frame we are able to find a particular so we are not going to use frame we are going to use the hsv value if we are having the uh, color okay or whatever the value of hsv is between this and this particular range then that is the mask that we want to create okay now we don't know that particular range we don't know that green color lies in which particular range itself so for that we are going to write another piece of code okay so for that what we are going to do is do you want to do you guys want to continue right now and complete the project it will take like 45 minutes more but we will be able to complete the entire project or you want to continue tomorrow please uh, let me know Harshal, you have not uh, installed uh, numpy that is the reason why you are getting that error is uh, cv2 dot color bgr to csv a method yes it is a method to basically fire convert the color from like red blue green or to uh, hsv okay see my basic suggestion would be to complete it today itself okay so that you guys are getting some time to go over to the video do the project on your own that is my basic suggestion i think so we should be completing it today itself See, it's not about processing uh, this much. Okay, uh, like I know that you are not coding it along me. So I know that you are not going to process it right now. You will have to watch the video again. But if I'm breaking the flow of the project, then tomorrow it will become much more difficult to recall what was happening in today's video. So I think so it would be better to complete the video today itself. Let's complete it today itself. Okay, so what we are going to do right now is instead of, uh, so like I will just cut short the entire thing instead of finding the values on our own okay like how we are going to find those values and everything i'll just cut short that particular process and i will tell you the values okay so i had a good explanation that i was going to give but no issues let's um, directly skip to the result that we have uh, so basically initially as well i plan to do it uh, by just giving you the results but uh, no issues uh we'll do it right now Okay, so let's create the NumPy arrays for the same. Let's uh, go right over here between the, uh, so we have to go up below right over here. 
So let's create the low values and the upper values right now. So L underscore G, that is the low values that we are having. Um, L underscore G uh, is equals to NP dot uh, array. So we are going to create a NumPy array for the list. Okay, again, why NumPy array? This is a type of a list itself. Okay, that contains the value for us, but NumPy arrays have like faster calculations. Okay, they are able to do calculations very fast on these arrays. So the value would be 32 comma uh, 94 comma 132. So that is the value for the lower end of the values for identifying green values. We need to find the upper values as well. So UG, uh, that is the upper green values that we need to have is equals to NP dot array. And then we are going to have our NP array right over here, 179, 255, 255. That is the highest values that is possible. That includes the black values as well. That is why we have taken up the upper values right over here. Uh, once we have completed that, we need to create our masks. So we need to put our lower values and the upper values right over here. So L underscore G, comma U underscore G. Okay. So what I've done right now is, like I said, you need to create a mask. Okay. Have you guys understood why we need to create a mask? Please let me know. Have you guys understood why we need to create a mask? Please let me know guys. Have you guys understood why we need to create a mask? Have you guys understood why we need to create a mask? Okay, so you need some low value, okay, and the upper value as well. Now, these values are not something that comes from my brain. There is no logic behind it. This values is something that you get from trial and testing, okay? So I actually plan to show you how to trial and test how to get these values. But right now, we don't have enough time to show the trial and testing. So I'm just giving you the results right now. I will give you the code as well, how to trial and test uh, about it uh, with the project video. But this is just understand that after trial and testing, you got these values, okay? The lower end values and the upper end values of HSV, okay? Sonu Kumar, I think so. You are late in the class because I haven't seen a single uh, comment from you from the start of the video. Whenever I have asked for people to say yes as well, I haven't seen a single comment from you. So you don't speak. I know you have come late. Okay. If people are there who are not able to understand who are there from the start, I will help them out as well. Okay. But those students who are not paying attention, coming late to the class, looking for just the attendance link, guys, I'm not the right instructor for you. Okay. Yes, uh, Abdullah, that's absolutely clever. The mask has been created to cover the green values. So the green values would be in a range of HSV. Okay. Okay. Just the range of some HSV itself. Okay. So that range itself, I've already given it to you guys. Okay. That the range will be between these two values. This is the H. S V for the lower end and this is the H S V for the upper end. Okay. So that is the entire values range of values that you are having. Okay. So that we have already put up uh, right over here. It will take two more minutes to finish this project. Okay. We have already done everything. We just need to subtract it. That's it. We will get this in like less two lines of code itself. Just two more lines of code and it's done. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, do one thing uh, on the day of like how to submit the project. I will have a small video and how like I will include the code as well, how to trial and test the values right now after trial and testing, we have got these values and I've already given these value to uh, you, but in the future, in the video to day after tomorrow, I will be putting up how to take this important. Okay. How to change these values, how to find that value itself. You can get it only through trial and testing. Nobody can tell you these values. Okay. Okay. This may also not work. Okay. We will have to trial and test it to get the appropriate values. This I'm just fitting it up randomly right now. Of course, the values would be different. Okay. Going further. Okay. So once we have created our mask right now, we need to take the bitwise and 
with this particular mask okay to get basically so for example once you've created let's look at the mask okay let's first look at the mask so let's do one thing let's uh have cv2 dot uh let's say i am show and then let's look at the mask okay let's name it as mask and let's have the mask shown right over here okay so we are writing again uh, another cv2 dot i am show okay and then we are having we are trying to show our mask that whatever we have created right now so let's save it let's run the program let's see what we get uh so as you are able to see this is the mask that we are able to create okay you are able to see that the mask retains over to the uh, human being itself but uh right now we want to place this mask onto our uh, image as well Okay, so this mask is basically just black and white as you're able to see so black and white means black means the value is one white means the value is zero okay are you guys able to understand that black means the value is one white means the value is zero there is no other value right over here right now what we want to do is we want to take the bitwise and so do you guys know what is what is bitwise and okay what is bitwise and operator you're having one and one so that will be true you are having one and uh, zero that will be false zero and zero will be false zero and one will be false so you are having a mask you are having an image you have to place that mask over the image take the bitwise and between all the matrix values and you will get the mask that you have created you will get the result of the mask that you have created so to get the result of the mask you want to take the bitwise and between the mask and the video itself okay so wait, i have just opened up another terminal so let's go back right over here and let's do the bitwise and for the mask okay so to do the bitwise and after we have created the mask what we want to do is res that is the resultant is equals to cv2 dot bitwise and that is the frame that we want to use you want to do the bitwise and between your frame so we don't have anything else okay usually your mask and there is like two other units we don't have anything else so we are going to put, put the bitwise and on the frame itself okay so you are having your frame comma frame comma mask is equals to okay so you are having the mask as mask and you want to provide the bitwise and on frame okay this is just the syntax for it don't worry why i've written frame two times that's the syntax you have to write it so you are going to provide the mask and do the bitwise operation on frame itself okay so let's look at our resultant instead of showing the mask let's look at the resultant as well so see uh cv2 dot i am show and we want to see the resultant so res comma res so let's save it right over here and let's watch the resultant okay so as you are able to see my lips are still intact okay so you are having your frame right over here okay this is the mask that you were able to create and you have just removed the human being from the entire screen you have identified the entire green screen and removed the entire uh, human being from right over here okay are you guys able to see this please let me know so this is the resultant like doing mask and frame we are doing bitwise and so this is the resultant that we are able to get we are able to get the green screen but our aim is not to get the green screen our aim is to delete the green screen itself okay that is our aim okay our aim is to delete the green screen and keep the human being how we can do that can somebody let me know how we can do that how we can keep the green screen and delete the human being itself somebody let me know we have got the resultant we have got the mask we have got the frame how can we keep the green screen from the resultant and remove the human being itself can somebody let me know it's very easy just think about it you will be able to understand no 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 
it's very easy guys just just try to try to try to think about something subtracting that's that's amazing anti mughal riddhi has said it correctly we are just going to subtract it we have the frame we can just subtract our resultant from the frame and we will be able to get the human being are you able to understand this we just need to subtract it so we are going to create another frame called as f we are going to have frame minus res resultant these are just matrices we are just going to subtract the matrices itself to get the human being so now if i'm just just like i'm commenting these lines of code out i'm going to have cv2 dot i am show and then we are going to have our final not final like pre-final or something like that let's have it as f comma f okay so let's save it right over here let's run this so i have done f is equals to frame minus res this is the code that i have written let's play this right now sorry run this right now <coughs> so my lips are gone a bit but still you are able to see that the green screen has been removed okay not completely because the values we weren't able to tamper on with properly but the green screen is now removed and the human is clearly visible so now what we need to do is we need to replace the green screen like the place that has been removed by your image okay that is what you want to do so let's try to see what f is okay let's try to see what f is so if i'm pressing on q it will close that thing for me because that is the code that we have written right now now let's uh, try to print f so instead of uh, showing you f let's print f inside our terminal okay so instead of showing you f i'm going to print the value of f inside the terminal itself okay so let's see that as you're able to see this is nothing else but continuous arrays okay as you're able to see it's like continuous arrays that are coming up on our screen and the black portion itself whatever is black i guess that is coming as maybe zero okay whatever portion is black that is coming up as zeros itself okay so this is how your like entire frame that you are seeing right now that we created looks like from the perspective of just numbers it's just matrices having values inside of it okay so let's just quit it right now okay okay so right now as you're able to see we have closed it okay so we will have to close the entire terminal because the window wasn't open so clicking on q does not matter because the window should have been open right now okay no issues in that so right now what we want to do is we want to remove we want to replace wherever there is a zero inside f okay so zeros basically represent the black portion wherever there is zero inside the f we want to replace it by the image that we are having and wherever the like value of that particular pixel is not zero we want to replace it by f itself whatever it is there if it is not zero it should be f if it is a zero it should be replaced by your image okay that is what we want to do so for that we have a particular numpy function that will help us with that so let's move on back and let's do that so let's write our code for that it's it would be very easy guys you don't have to worry so we are going to create our green let's create the last particular stuff green green okay is equals to we are going to have it we are going to replace it by np dot where that is basically our uh, function that we are going to use the so np dot where basically says that wherever okay wherever f is equals to is equals to zero that is wherever f is black okay or f is equals to is equals to zero at that particular point of time i want to replace it by the image otherwise okay otherwise if f is not equal to zero i want to remain it as f itself okay so that this basically makes a green screen frame where if f is equals to is equals to zero wherever f is zero it should be replaced by the image otherwise it should be it should remain as f itself now i'm going to have our last line of code cv2 dot i am show okay as green screen this is the last line of code that we are having right now so we'll use the play button right over here 
and we will get the video missing argument mat did i make some error while writing the code i am show green screen okay i didn't write the name of that particular function itself so i need to put the name as well final okay so i put the name as final and the thing that i want to show is green screen so please remember to name it as well as we're able to see right over here it it is not that great looking because the values were not a we were not able to tamper up with the values but you are able to see that now we are having the background as our Hogwarts. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. You need to press Q to close it. Okay, without that, it won't be closed. And that is the entire code that you are having. So you can remove all these lines of code. You don't require it. Okay, so that it looks a bit more cleaner and than usual. And uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay so this is the code that you need to submit how to submit the code where to submit the code i'll be telling you guys day after tomorrow so tomorrow there will be no classes day after tomorrow i will be releasing a video okay where you guys will be getting the information uh about the entire stuff how to submit the project where to submit the project in that video i will include how to make the customization as well okay how to do the customization and this how to find those values yourself if you want i will keep that in there and you will get five days from today from today you get five days after five days the link for submitting the project will be closed after that it will take us one to two weeks to send out the certificates on your email addresses whatever email addresses that you have utilized to fill up your attendance forms okay that will be the process that i will be following are you guys able to understand this please let me know Uh, Akshit, because uh, you are having white teeth, you are having white eyes, so that is the reason why you don't use a white color. Of course, you can use it, okay. But usually, the best two colors that have been used is green and blue. These are the two colors that are usually used. Uh, but that's not compulsory. You can use other colors as well. If I want to retrieve that video, where can I do so? I'm not able to understand your question, uh, Mr. Singh. Yeah, usually you will be going with green or blue color. Uh, even red color because these are the three colors that are like prevalent. It, it has made with RBG, red, blue and green. But in that as well, you usually use blue and green color itself. Upasna, I think so you have done something wrong while downloading it. Uh, there shouldn't be any problems. Okay. Uh, secondly, for those who are planning to join the training and internship program. Okay. So you can, of course, apply for the same. If you want to contact me directly, you have my WhatsApp number as well. You can contact me directly and I will help you guys out uh, throughout the training and uh, placement program as well. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. So tomorrow we are going to start off uh, day after tomorrow. We are going to have the video. Tomorrow will be a holiday. You guys can chill and enjoy as well as look at the entire uh, project once again tomorrow to get a better understanding. Please research about SV, uh, HSV values. Okay. It's very important. Okay. Please research about HSV values as well. Uh, we are not storing the uh, result video. Yes, you can do it in Python, but right now, and for the sake of this particular video, we aren't storing it anywhere. Okay, but yes, you can do it. So Darshan, uh, you can like. I don't want it. I didn't want to make a very funny video of me just taking a green cloth and putting around my head. But yes, if you want to make a funny video like having the invisibility clone, you can do that as well. You can just instead of me sitting in a video and talking with a green screen behind my back, if you have a green screen, you can take it and just like put it around yourself, and it will just make it as an invisibility cloak itself. Like that's totally up to you. Just the image that you want to put up. Okay, just click the image without the person for the background 
and then like just have that particular person inside that a video that just takes around the entire stuff around his neck and you have got the uh, invisibility cloak itself okay <laughs> you have to just like apply your brains you have given you the stuff i've given you the tools now you apply your brains how to create that okay yeah uh, open cv also uh, is in c++ so yeah i've already told that i think so akshit Okay, so again, for those who are interested in the training and internship program, right now we have for full stack web development and data science with 100% placements as well. So you can definitely join us right over there and we will have an amazing time. Okay. Uh, Harshit, I think so. I have told my team to send out the project certificates as well. They haven't been sent because some of the projects are still remaining to uh, check. So that will be sent very soon. I think so for Facebook, it has been sent for Netflix. It hasn't been sent. Okay. Uh, Sai Wasmi, that's the beauty of VS code. You can have multiple languages set up right over there. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much guys. Uh, we'll meet day after tomorrow and we'll have an uh, amazing session right over there as well. Okay. Okay, thank you so much guys. Thank you.